Hello there, Brick Fanatics. 2025 is nearly upon us, and all of the initial rumours about the kinds of sets that we're going to be getting next year have begun to trickle out onto the internet from various unnamed sources. Now, as I point out, every single time that we do a rumour video, it is important to take all of this with a big grain of salt because you absolutely cannot trust a rumour. Just because a set is rumoured, it does not mean that it will actually finally be completed. Just because a description is given for a rumour, it doesn't mean that it will actually, accurately represent what is finally put on store shelves. And of course, any random stranger on the internet can make up a rumour, so we can't necessarily trust these. At the same time, though, it is worth pointing out that there are very few ships quite as leaky as the good ship Lego. And indeed, I don't think I would trust a Lego employee to plan a surprise birthday party, because secrets have a habit of just kind of leaking out of that company at an alarming rate. Anyway, a bunch of rumours hit the internet this week, many of them from sources that have proved reliable in the past, uh, and these rumours have covered basically every theme that the LEGO group is currently serving, uh, which means that we've got a lot that we could potentially talk about, and I'm just going to pick a few highlights before we get onto the main bulk of the topic for today, which is the LEGO modular building that is supposed to be coming in the very near future. Like, if they follow the same release window that they had for 2023, we could be getting it revealed uh, revealed within the next month or so, and on store shelves in time for Christmas. So that's going to be what we mostly focus on in this video. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other stuff on this list. There are of course a bunch of different LEGO Star Wars rumours, and if these rumours do prove to be true then 2025 is going to be an absolutely brilliant year for fans of Jango Fett, because apparently we're going to be getting a return of something like the helmet collection with a Jango Fett helmet, and potentially also a beefy, bulky uh, slave one of the Jango Fett variety, rather than the Boba Fett variety, which is the one that we've had most recently. Like, maybe we're looking at a UCS Slave 1. That is absolutely overdue. I would absolutely adore that. That would be fantastic. I guess it probably wouldn't be called Slave 1 anymore, would it? Because um, Disney don't like using the word slave, but they love the word robot, so don't tell them what that word means. Actually, that's quite a nice segue that I hadn't thought about. Uh, pretend that I planned this in advance. So, one other rumour, speaking of Boba and Jango Fett, that is coming up in the near future, is that apparently we might be getting a Star Wars brick-built sign. So imagine this, but Lego rather than just saying Lego and actually being... What even is this? Some kind of resin, I guess, like plasticky stuff. Uh, yeah, apparently we might be getting like just a Star Wars logo made out of bricks, which would be quite fun. Uh, definitely one for display for more grown-up fans, I would say. Apparently it's not necessarily going to come with any minifigures, so it's just going to be the Star Wars sign. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the ones on this list that really stood out as being something slightly different, and I'd be interested to see if it does prove to be the case, and if it does, uh, how they go about that and how they make it look a little bit more dynamic than just being that very familiar logo. I might be the odd one out here, but if we were to do like a, a Star Wars logo out of bricks, I'd, instead of this one, rather have the one from the original Star Wars posters from 1977, 1978, depending on where you are in the world, uh, which have that cool kind of triangular look to them. They're just slightly different, uh, feel slightly retro because it's not a style that has been used more recently, uh, and I just think it would be very fun to have, and also has the benefit of, like a pyramid, being uh, suitable for brick display without too much danger of it being too top-heavy. That said, that's just uh, a vague hope on my part, and I'm probably going to be disappointed. But either way, yeah, do you know what? I'm willing to see the LEGO group try something different and do some brick-built signage. We're also potentially getting an Ahsoka Jedi Interceptor and potentially a U-Wing, which would tie in very nicely with uh, Andor Series 2, which I think is coming next year, but um, at the same time, Disney Plus schedules are never particularly set in stone. Either way, uh, there's some fun-looking stuff on the horizon for LEGO Star Wars if these rumours do prove true. But okay, probably the most concrete of the rumours that we've had this week, the set that is probably going to debut an awful lot sooner than many of the 2025 sets that have been rumoured, is 10350 Residential Townhouse, which is believed to be the next set in the long-running modular building series, and absolutely something that a lot of fans are particularly excited to get their hands on. Whoa, I don't love how this one separates. Um, this is the one modular building 
that I have uh, actually built <laughs> because I've got I've got quite a few in the house uh, but they are in their boxes because I just can't bite the bullet on building all of them uh, and there's two reasons for that one is because of the time uh, just involved in putting these things together but the other reason is I've got nowhere to put them because they don't fit like a row of them in calyxes so you've got all these calyx spaces and you only put one per space and I, I I mean I could put them up the top but then I've got to move some of the other stuff it's just I don't I don't know what to do with a modular collection. I need a, a separate shelf somewhere to put them. But anyway, this is the one that I've got and this is the pertinent one for this discussion because if we are going to be getting a residential townhouse, then it does bring to mind, if I separate these, not that, that good one side, it does bring to mind uh, the the little housey part of this because this gives off very strong residential townhouse vibes uh, and indeed in speculating about what kind of house we might be getting with this next potential modular building. Uh, it does bring to mind this kind of architectural style and the question of what kind of architectural style might the Lego group end up choosing for a set that is meant to be a slightly more homely uh, modular building set. Look at this, why am I like this? Why do I buy these things and then just not actually build them? I, I have a problem, I have a problem. The residential townhouse is rumoured to be debuting on the 1st of December to cost $229.99 in the US and to contain 3,266 pieces, which makes it significantly smaller than last year's modular natural history museum, uh, but in line with and perhaps uh, slightly larger than a lot of the other smaller modular buildings like the bookshop that I've got, which, where'd the rest of it go? <laughs> which uh, take up a 32 by 32 base plate, or in this particular case, two of the smaller 16 by 32 base plates. So we're looking at a building that has approximately this footprint, probably, that's not necessarily set in stone, uh, and is going to be entirely devoted to like a living area, unless there's maybe like a little tiny uh, kind of uh, shop or what have you on the side, similar to how we had uh, the, the police station had a little donut shop on the side. Maybe there's something like that, but otherwise we're looking at a building that people live in primarily. And uh, thinking about that, there's a bunch of different architectural styles that the LEGO group could go for here. Assuming that they're sticking with the same kind of uh, Eurocentric slash Anglocentric uh, kind of architectural design that we typically get with the buildings of the modular building collection because they're generally all of a kind of a slightly old-fashioned uh, European style of design rather than say something out of the Far East or the Middle East. Uh, I think it would be wonderful to have some buildings from a bunch of different parts of the world uh, and example for example, I'd love, uh, like, they, they had the, the, the Buildings of the World collection as a little gift with purchases a while back, and they did a bunch of different buildings that showed off the, the variety of different types of houses that you have around the world, and yet the Modular Building collection does stay firmly in that, as I said, European kind of design bubble. You do occasionally get, like, a modular-esque or modular-compatible set that uh, comes from a different part of the world. So for example, with this one, this is the Lunar New Year set from the Year of the Ox. So that was 2021, 2022? 2021, yes. So this one is compatible with a bunch of the, uh, the modular buildings that exist. It's got a 32 by, wait, 32 by 48 footprint, I think. And rather than being very tall, it's very wide and very long. Absolutely delightful set. And as I say, something different, uh, if I can make sure the lights aren't shining on this, architecturally, that really stands out. So if you were to have this alongside a bunch of other modulars, you've got a very, very Chinese park in the middle of your very European looking street, which is delightful if you happen to be from, say, I don't know, Hong Kong, and you want to have the European architecture alongside the uh, the, the beautiful 
gorgeous Chinese garden design. Or, uh, say, Macau as well, which has uh, that delightful, gorgeous European design of a lot of the architecture there, crossed with, like, gorgeous Chinese parks and gardens. I absolutely, if you have the chance to go to Macau, I definitely recommend it. Uh, you don't need to spend as much money in the casinos as you think, because there's so much cool cultural architectural stuff with the mushing together of Portuguese and Chinese culture. I'm getting distracted, but my point is there's room for the, uh, the modular building collection and adjacent connecting sets to do different things with different architectural styles from around the world. But we're probably not going to be getting that because we're probably going to be getting something that fits very similarly with what we already have. I just, I, I love this one so much. It's just, there's there's no room for it. <laughs> Again, is the problem. I just struggle so much with these. Look at this. It would just, it would go so well with that Chinese garden and just like a, a metropolitan Chinese European city that just, oh, I need to put these together. So over on Brick Fanatics, we've put together a list of a bunch of different uh, European mostly and slash American architectural styles that we could see reflected in this up and coming uh, modular building. Uh, and some of them would be absolutely brilliant to have because there would be something that'd be very, very different to what we've had before. For example, we could have like a Georgian townhouse. And the set that comes to mind with this one would be uh, Grimald Place with that wonderful design that kind of opens up so that Grimald Place kind of slots out to, 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 to emulate how in Harry Potter, the film in particular, uh, the building just kind of comes out of nowhere with, by magic. But that set, despite being really cool, has always been a little bit less, um, it's literally a bit shallow for anybody who wants to put it into a modular building cityscape. And so having something in that kind of style with the very, very tall, narrow buildings all stacked together would be a delightful inclusion that would do something that would be very in keeping with the style of many of the other buildings in the modular uh, building collection. But at the same time just feel slightly different to say uh, just doing the same kind of architectural style that we've had from other houses in the past. See also the kind of Victorian terraces that we have here in the United Kingdom or the brownstone buildings of New York and how they're all kind of smushed together and they're taller uh, and they, they, they just have so much cool character to them that it would be really cool to have like a little residential area. It wouldn't just be like a townhouse. It would be a bunch of little houses next to each other that would uh, just make the, the, the modular building cityscape feel like a place that is lived in rather than just a collection of shops and businesses. But the rumoured title for this set is Townhouse rather than Townhouses, and therefore I suspect that what we're looking at is probably one big building instead. So what kind of thing am I personally expecting? I'm expecting a slightly larger house uh, that's got a lot of detail on the inside. I would think one building rather than two, uh, and I would think it would be something slightly grand. Something that then puts things like this to shame and makes them feel a little bit small by comparison. I just take the, the house here that is the focus. Like this kind of thing, but blown out to twice the size. Uh, it's been a few years since this one was on the market now, uh, certainly since it was new, and I definitely think that they could revisit a similar kind of design, but if they were to make it 32 by 32 instead of this smaller 16 by 32, then there's so much more scope for detail on the inside uh, and indeed on the outside to make it just look really really nice without having to be uh, a series of houses next to each other that you then lose some of that detail because all of these smaller buildings have to have walls and have to have uh, separate doors and separate windows etc etc and when you're building one big thing you can do a lot more with that space there's also it's worth bearing in mind the factor that we're going to be getting some additional uh, modular-esque buildings in the near future because we know we are because of Lego Ideas. So we know we're getting a botanical garden and we know that we're getting the Twilight House. Uh, and I feel like in designing the modular building, the Lego group will be thinking about how that fits in with these additions as well. And in particular, I think that the, the Twilight House is key there because that's another residential building, albeit one that is particularly architecturally interesting and very modern and very, uh, very glass. And I suspect that they're going to try and avoid doing that kind of thing with the modular building as well. 
So we're going to have, hopefully, something that is a bit of a departure from that, something that feels a little bit more uh, timeless and slightly old-fashioned and slightly nostalgic, rather than the very modern house that we'll be getting for Bella and her friends. But this does bring me to a point that I felt like I wanted to talk about, which is the, the widening expanse of modular-like buildings. And I've been kind of skirting around that for all of this video. And you get some sets, like I said, like this one, where they're technically not modular buildings but they work very well with the rest of the modular buildings they've even got the pins to connect them together we've also got for example uh, various marvel sets that are all designed to just clip right in there which does create a kind of a, a tonal dissonance sometimes where you've got these slightly old-fashioned and nostalgic and retro buildings alongside like avengers tower which is a very very modern building and i do feel it does speak to the needs of the fan collective that we are getting more and more of these kind of modular-esque buildings. So we've got the ones that uh, come from the, the Marvel line, which I maintain that one of the cooler ones, especially if you're putting them with uh, additional modular buildings, is that uh, Sorcerer Supreme Sanctum Sanctorum, because it fits that aesthetic and that kind of time period a little bit better than Avengers Tower, even though Avengers Tower is brilliant in its own right. Uh, and then you've got uh, these other other things like Lego idea sets coming in the near future uh, and indeed if you look at and this is this is really just an aside but a lot of the, the Bricklink designer program sets that are buildings also fit very well with that same aesthetic you can definitely tell that I've got a preferred architectural style when I pull this out but but um, when we were talking with the designers of this set last year they were pointing out that they they really went for a modular feel with this one in the way that it was all put together and um, <laughs> My kids have been at this, and so Loki and Mickey Mouse are having a dim sum with Sonic the Hedgehog, because of course they are. But there's a level of detail, especially on like the stairs of this one, that you normally only get with a modular building. And it feels like a lot of the things that we've traditionally thought of as being modular style design choices are bleeding into other sets across other themes. And that's absolutely brilliant, because this is a level of detail that fans absolutely adore, and being able to see it on other sets, and being able to find other sets that can more easily integrate into existing modular lineups means that fans have so many more options for expanding their streets and adding to them uh, and putting in additional buildings and giving them their own kinds of character. So uh, for example I've seen a, a mock that you can do with this if you have two of these sets that turns this one into a modular building and so you've just got a gorgeous Chinese style restaurant alongside your other modular buildings and it's going to be great in the near future as these things kind of expand further fingers crossed and we get more buildings that are modular-esque without actually being modular that can be added into a scene where people will be able to not just have that slightly nostalgic retro uh, Eurocentric street for these modular buildings but you'll be able to add in additional buildings for additional parts of the world. We've got for example another Bricklink designer program one coming up that gorgeous adventure in Transylvania set which is going to be great for anybody who wants their modular setup to be a little bit more gothic and a little bit creepier and so hopefully the Lego group will give us us a bunch more of these official options, not even talking about the very, very, very many fan-designed mocks that exist out there for anybody wanting to add uh, additional buildings to their modular lineup, but hopefully with the LEGO Group allowing a few more sets in a few other themes to feel a bit more modular-like, we can get some additional different architectural design styles and people will be better able to personalize their particular cityscape to match the kind of aesthetic that they're going for. So if it's somebody like me and I'm looking for like a Hong Kong or Macau style, uh, slightly Chinese, slightly European setup, then that's available for me. Uh, if somebody else wants to do something that feels a little bit more, I don't know, Middle Eastern inspired and get some cool buildings that they'll be available for people as well. I would absolutely love to see some of those and one can hope that we can see some of them maybe through at Lego Ideas or maybe through the Bricklink Designer program, even as both of those programs say absolutely don't do modulars, there's ways that you can do a modular building that 
is kind of modular inspired without it actually having the Technic pins in the side to connect them together. And maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself here, and maybe I'm just I'm wishing for things that are so far in the future or just not absolutely on the LEGO Group's radar at all that we're not going to see them. But I do just hope that whatever we get from modular buildings in the near future, we can have some stuff that feels a little bit different and a little bit unique, and that as the LEGO Group continues to allow other designers from other themes to explore similar kinds of building techniques to the modular buildings lineup, we can get something that allows for a little bit more diversity in the designs that we're seeing. But in the meantime, we definitely have the chance to look forward to the townhouse, which is, you know, as said, rumoured still, so it's not definitely set in stone, but come on, it's, you know. <laughs> Hopefully we will be getting another delightful residential building where people can actually live rather than just go and spend money all the time. Uh, and we can have a, a bit more of a sense of a Lego modular street as being uh, a place where people live rather than just a place where people work. But what are you hoping for out of the new modular building? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also make sure that you do all of the rest of the YouTube things. You know them by this point. Hit subscribe and the notification bell uh, and hit the thumbs up button and do all of that jazz. Make sure that if you are going to be purchasing a modular building in the near future or indeed anything in the near future from the LEGO website that you go via our affiliate link which is down in the description or the QR code that is currently on the screen because doing so just gives us a little bit of the percentage of that sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra but going through the link is the best way to help out Brick Fanatics and help to keep us making all of these videos. Uh, otherwise, make sure that you have an absolutely lovely day and go to brickfanatics.com for all of your LEGO news and coverage and sign up to our newsletter so that you never miss anything LEGO related ever again. And we will hopefully be seeing a new modular building in the very near future if the rumours can be believed, which are not set in stone. But...